Okie dokie, this is Chem 150, I'm Brad Neal. Uh, let's start talking about atomic structure and periodicity. So to start out this chapter, um, we need to have an understanding of what electromagnetic radiation is. So electromagnetic radiation is uh, some kind of radiant energy that's gonna have wave-like behavior. Um, so we've got an image down here, um, so, and the link to the, uh, images, uh, let's see here, it's not really showing up very well. On the slides, uh, you'll see the link to the images if you want to pull those up yourselves. Um, again, from that Libre Text website. This is the electromagnetic spectrum, um, and so we've got all these kinds of different, uh, forms of radiation and we're going to refer to them all as some form as radiation so we have the ones like uh, gamma radiation that made the incredible hulk if you're into comic books all the way down to radio waves um and a couple of things or there's a number of things to note here one up top we have wavelength and down here at the bottom we have frequency um and you'll notice, and we're going to talk more explicitly as we go along with this uh, idea of setting the groundwork for electromagnetic radiation, um, as one goes up, the other one goes down. Wavelength is going to get denoted by this Greek symbol lambda, uh, and frequency is going to get a fancy V, uh, some kind of italic V. And typically with wavelength, we're going to measure that in meters, and with frequency, we're going to measure that in hertz. And like I said, we'll talk a bit more about that in a minute. One thing that I think would be really useful for you to know is approximately um, the relationship to uh, the various kinds of electromagnetic radiation. Like, What are their neighbors? For example, gamma is far here to the left. Um, it's a high energy kind of radiation and radio is here on the other end of the uh, spectrum. Um, a very low energy kind of radiation. Visible light, uh, we normally just call it visible light, we don't call it visible radiation. It's kind of uh, in this scale here in the middle. Um, and within visible radiation, you have these Roy G. Biv um, designations, you know, the red, orange, green, yellow, blue, indigo, violet kind of stuff. Violet is right up next to the ultraviolet on the spectrum and our red is near the infrared. Um, the image here B that we've got is white light being shown through a prism and if you take white light and um, you hit it with and you use a prism you can actually uh, diffract um, all the different colors in the rainbow from it and it's going to show up always in that Roy G Biv. So let's talk about some of the properties of waves. Um, I mean, there's three main characteristics that we're going to be focused on with waves. The first one is wavelength. And like I said, we're gonna give it that uh, Greek symbol lambda. Um, lambda is gonna be defined as, or wavelength is gonna be defined as the distance between two consecutive peaks. So uh, here, for example, uh, here on the, um, illustration, we've got this peak, we've got this trough, we've got this peak, we've got this trough. Well, the distance between two peaks, that's what we're going to call our wavelength. We could go from trough to trough, but typically we just say peak to peak. It should be the same distance. Um, we're going to talk about frequency. Frequency is going to, again, let's get to that, get to that fancy V. Um, this is the number of waves, number of cycles uh, per second that a wave is going to pass in a given point per second. So what does that mean? So let's take a look at the examples uh, down here at the bottom of the page. Um, so if we say that... Uh, from the far left here to the far right is uh, the number of waves that are 
occurring within one second for a wave. So we could go through and we could count the number of waves that happen. So one, two, three, four waves happen during this one second interval. If we go down to the next wave, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight waves that happen during that one, that same one second interval. So our frequency for the top wave would be four hertz. So we're giving it the H Z H E R T Z hertz, not the pain kind of hertz. Um, so that's going to be a four hertz wave, and the wave down here below would be an eight hertz wave. And if you look at the very bottom wave, we have one, two, three, four hertz. Okay, so this has got the exact same frequency as the wave above. The difference here is going to be the amplitude, and the amplitude is going to be um, designated in that um the amplitude is going to be designated as part of that um, shading here. So kind of like half of the height of the peak is going to be our amplitude. So the difference between this top wave and this bottom wave is going to be uh, just a one in terms of amplitude. For our course, we're not going to be talking a lot about amplitudes. Um, when you do a physics class, they will get more into amplitudes and the things and the stuff that that implies. But for right now, in Chem 150, we're not going to really be working with that. So characteristic one is wavelength, characteristic two is frequency, and characteristic three is going to be speed. Um, so for any kind of electromagnetic radiation that we're going to be working with in a vacuum, all of them, no matter what the frequency is, no matter what the wavelength is, they're all going to travel at the same speed. And in that vacuum, it's 2.9979 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. Um, a lot of times people just round that to 3 because it's really close to 3, meter, or 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second, um, but it really isn't. So this is whenever uh, people say, like, how fast does it take light from the sun to reach the earth? Well, it's eight minutes. Well, why? Because it's eight minutes because this is how fast light is traveling. Uh, and if we consider space to be a complete vacuum, even if it really isn't, it's mostly a vacuum. This is the speed that we would see uh, radiation traveling. So those are the three big things that we need to always keep track of in our heads about waves. So we alluded to it a little bit earlier. Um, as the wavelength increases, our frequency will decrease and vice versa. It's an inverse relationship. What we'll find is that inverse relationship um, comes in the form of this equation. So the speed of our wave is going to always equal, in a vacuum, the speed of our wave is going to equal the wavelength times the frequency. So uh, this C speed of light equals wavelength of the light times the frequency of the light. So let's do a pretty quick little example here. Um, so in modern comic books, Superman uh, has powers here on Earth because of the yellow sun that the Earth has. Krypton had a red sun, and that's why people weren't just all walking around with superpowers. So the question is asking us if we have a wavelength of red light, and that red light's wavelength is 650 nanometers, and yellow light's wavelength is 580 nanometers, what are their respective frequencies? So if we go to the board, we can write out and we can say C equals lambda nu. So the nu is what the real term is for that fancy V. So N-U would be how that would be spelled. And please note, my lambda is not exactly gorgeous. I'm not expecting your lambda to be gorgeous either. Um, I do kind of recommend... Uh, putting some kind of denotation there for the V, however, to uh, denote that that is not V, but it is in fact nu, the symbol nu for frequency. 
Okay, so the question is asking us, it's, well, what it's giving us is the wavelength. And specifically, the wavelength of red light being 650 nanometers. And we also have the wavelength of yellow equaling that 580 nanometers. What we're asked for is the corresponding frequencies, the respective frequencies. So frequency of red and frequency of yellow. Okay, our speed of light equation up above is all we really need. So we've got the speed of light is gonna equal the wavelength of our red light times the frequency of our red light. So if we start plugging and chugging, 2.9979 times 10 to the eighth meters per second equals our frequency of our, or I'm sorry, our wavelength of our red light, the 650 nanometers. Now immediately right now, something should, like a tingle spider sense should be going off um, because nanometers is not the same unit as meters. We need to do some kind of conversion. And so this is where those conversion factors from chapter one are going to come into play. I do recommend that you go back and refamiliarize yourself with the conversion factors from nanometers to meters and uh, angstroms to meters. So for the sake of the video here, uh, we're going to just go ahead and tell you that this is 10 to the ninth nanometers equals one meter. So if we do this conversion just as part of our overall equation, nanometers cancel, and we're going to have converted our um, number of nanometers into meters. And it's so important that we have meters here because the meters here and the meters here will then be equal to one another. And so, what we'll end up doing now is multiplying this by our frequency of our red light. So we can solve both of the, we can solve this now to by both sides uh, by that 650 uh, nanometers times the 10 to the ninth meters, or I'm sorry, 10 to the. We do math. And so, just to try to be a little explicit about it, and I'll write it out. Oops. Good job. There we go. Cool. Whip out handy dandy calculator. Make sure when you do your calculations that you are using your parentheses and other things correctly um, and you're using your exponents properly. So one thing I see sometimes people do when they type on their calculator, they'll say something like this 2.9979E. Now, E is totally fine to use if you're using a uh, scientific calculator or something like a Texas instrument. But what you don't want to do then is E times 10 raised to the eighth. This would be completely wrong. Um, the right way to write this into your calculator would be 2.9979E to the eighth. If you put that 10 in there, like the example that's got the red mark through it, um, you're going to be off by a factor of 10 um, when you actually do your stuff. If you don't want to write E, you could uh, also just do the 2.9979 times 10 raised to the eighth, and, but make sure you put the entire thing in parentheses. 
So if we put this in said calculator, 2.9979 E, oops there, I, A. That is not how I use my calculator. There it is. E to the eighth divided by the uh, 650 divided by uh, 10 raised to the 9. I ended up with an answer. I'm going to for uh, sake of. Uh, nope. I came up with 4.612 times 10 to the 14th. My question to you is what are going to be the units here? If you. Seconds. Yeah, so if you take a look by writing out the equation that we did here on the left, the nanometers canceled. Meters is in the numerator of our numerator, so it's in the numerator. And then meters down here is in the numerator of our denominator, so it's in the denominator. So that cancels. So what we're gonna be left with is just simply per seconds. Whoa, that was way too much erased. What we're going to be left with is per seconds, or another way of writing it would be one over seconds. Now, one over seconds is the same thing as saying seconds raised to the negative one is the same thing as writing out hertz. Because per second is the definition of hertz. So we're able to calculate the frequency of red light being this 4.6. Now we could ask ourselves, what's the number of significant figures? The way that the question is written out, uh, we're given the 650 nanometers. This is where you could have a debate on whether or not that zero is significant or not. I would say the zero is not significant because we didn't put a decimal behind it. And we also don't have the number written out in scientific notation. So in my head, this is actually going to be two sig figs, um, but excuse me, because different um, books kind of illustrate things differently. At this point in time, which I want you to focus on is this should be two or three, and we'll call it good right now. We can go through the same process and we can figure out what the frequency of yellow light is. Does that make any sense? Yep. All right.